Today we are going to discuss a case of the posterior segment. Today we have the case of central serous retinopathy, which is a co common problem which is seen in young male and female patients. So this is a 56-year-old female who had used tablet rifampicin 300 mg BD for six weeks and she feels slight improvement. She had initially had decreased vision in the right eye since two months of which she had intravisceral avastin injection one month ago somewhere else. She was a non-diabetic but she was a hypertensive. Visual acuity was 618 and persistent mild central serous retinopathy was seen on uh, examination of the fundus. The visual acuity was 66 in the left eye. Here you can see this is OCT scan showing findings in the right eye and the left eye. The right eye here you see a colored picture in which you see that the elevation of the retina is in the red so that shows it's more than 500 when it shows 500 so the swelling involving the central segment. There's elevation of the foveal contour with the intact retinal pigment epithelium and the, the retinal photoreceptors are elevators. They're elevated and there's fluid in the subretinal space. But the interesting thing is that the photoreceptors are not disturbed. They, they seem to be intact in their structure and the layers of the retina seems to be intact. The typical outer nuclear layer and outer plexiform layer seems to be in their usual shape. The thickness is 520 microns in the central and it is also involving the perifoveal area is 445, 442 going up to the superior area. So the, what are the risk factors for CSR which you should consider in all patients? Steroid administration, Cushing syndrome, helicobacter bacter pylori infection, pregnancy, psychological stress, sleep apnea. It is said that it is actually the release of ad adrenaline in the body that leads to this leakage of chorioretinal fluid from in between the retinal pigment epithelium. There is a small break in the tight junctions between the RPE. So the diagnosis in this patient was a right central serous retinopathy which was confirmed on CSR. As the patient still had persistent symptoms, so we advised her to have a fluorescein angiogram done on both sides. Treatment she was give, being given at this time was nepaphenic sodium three times a day. She also complained of allergy symptoms, so she, she was getting olopatadine, eye drops twice a day, and multivitamin drops, tablets. So here you can see the colored photograph showing this is the circular area of elevation of the retina which looked like a large blister and this is serious sub serious elevation of the posterior pole which is also seen in the black and white pictures the good point to see is that you look for white spots which are typically seen in the retinal pigment epithelium level the deeper retina in patients with old CSR so that is not present so you look at the fluorescein angiogram, early arterial photographs. There's this bit of hemorrhage which you saw earlier looks black, but there's this is slightly arteriovenous phase. Here you see ink blot type pattern, appearance of leakage in this area, and there's diffuse area of leakage in a circular pattern superior to the fovea. And then you go on to the next picture in which you see this area. If you look in detail in the following angiograms, you will see that the patient has got leakage of fluid from that area in later phases. And what happened is you can see this is the area of subretinal fluid, which is seen about five to ten minutes after take, doing the fluorescein angiogram. This is pooling in this area in the posterior pole. So this is very important to find out, but the important thing to see is their focal areas of leakage, which are away from the fovea. So the treatment option available for these would be uh, laser therapy. So what are the other treatment options? You can do observation. In cases, corticosteroids should be discontinued definitely. Laser micropulse, like laser to the RPE site of leakage, like in this patient, we can try that because it's extra foveal. PDT at 30 to 50% of the dose, used for CNV is useful with 50% light intensity but you need to have it done for involving the foveal area. Intravitreal anti-VGF can be used which we saw but they have got limited results uh, of as we have known. 
Other treatments available, rifampicin, which we had used in this patient. Aspirin is also available. Beta blockers are available. Myfeprestone and aplerinone. All of these are drugs which have been used with anecdotal results. So, and they can be used in these patients because this is a disease which tends to be a chronic disease and patients are quite distress with their vision and sometimes people even lose their vision because of this chronic disease because of this chronic inflammation the retinal pigment epithelium uh, can undergo atrophy in these patients so that is very important that it is not a very benign disease it can cause later symptoms thank you very much for watching